Hey everybody, we're back. It's been almost three years. What have we been doing in three years? In three years, we got married, which you probably saw the video on our page. Yeah. Uh, on our channel. And then we moved from Guam to Florida, and then from Florida to Colorado. Yep. And we've been in Colorado for like two and a half years. Yeah. Almost three. Almost three years. And, um... We haven't really been filming because it's just been chaotic here, trying to get things figured out. Like everybody's lives after the pandemic. Yeah. Getting back to uh, what we want to do. Right. And, you know, now we're back. And today we're doing a twofer. Two little things to do in Colorado that are pretty fun. And uh, right next to each other. And directly next to each other. Literally four minutes next to each other. Uh, the first one that we did was the Cave of the Winds. It's pretty low light, so we didn't really do any talking points or anything like that. So I'll put that at the end of this video. That way it's kind of just a, an intro with the guide speaking. Right. Sage, she was awesome. She was really cool. And then just kind of fast forward through that. But up here, right now, we're going to do the, the Cliff Dwellings. Manitou. The Manitou Cliff Dwellings. That's the one we're going to do. And it looks pretty cool from right here. So, it looks pretty uh, cool from the parking lot. Yeah. So we have high hopes. Oh, yeah. We also got a truck. Oh, yeah. This is our truck. This is, we call her Big Bertha. <laughs> I actually have a beard now. I don't think I had a beard in the last thing. I have really long hair now, too. So right. So that kind of is another thing that changed. Three years of growth. I have long hair, and she has short hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. This is Big Bertha. She, uh gets us up and down the mountains. She's a 21 year old truck and she has almost 300,000 miles and she is, she rides like a dream. <laughs> All we do is take care of her and she gets us where we gotta go. All right, let's go check out these cliff dwellings. Would you come in? Okay, mm -hmm. right now we're inside the teepee. This is what the Native Americans would use to follow buffalo and they would cinch it up together at the top there and it would always stay together at the top and then they would just bring the bottoms in and it would close up real nice and then they would trail it behind their horses. Um, that way they could track buffalo with it and they could just camp out in this in their hunting parties. That's cool. It's pretty cool. smells fresh in here like it smells like like cedar you smell that yeah it's probably this wood right here it smells good it smells really good in here but you would like expect it to like smell like mm, right moist and it smells really good To the gift shop we always end everything at a gift shop <laughs> um, this is a little museum it has some nice pictures and stuff <laughs>
just got out of the gift shop. Um, they have a lot of Native American stuff in there that you can purchase. It helps them out. Uh, it was mostly Navajo Nation stuff. Um, we got a hat for someone. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> uh, we're going to go check out the cave dwellings right now. And uh, yeah, let's go do that. <laughs> oh, finally the sun's coming back out. It's pretty yes. cloudy right now, so... The other half of me talking about the uh, formations, how scientists say they formed and the explanations for all of that. So, this cave was originally found by these two young kids, John and George Pickett. The Pickett brothers made their way up here with the church's hiking group, which they decided was boring. Instead, they were going to make their way up into the mountains without telling anyone. They found these two large sinkholes, and in those sinkholes they found a cave. So of course they lit their church candles and started to make their way in. They only made it about 30 to 40 feet before the wind picked up, blew out their candles. They couldn't see any further into the cave. In fact, they could barely see the way they'd just come in and all they could hear was a loud howling noise. So they came to the conclusion that it was a ghost and accordingly decided to make their way back in town to politely inform everyone, we found a haunted cave, go blew out our candles. <laughs> For some reason, only one guy believed the screaming children. Oh, let, 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 where are you going? Okay. George Snyder made his way out here. And his stone cutting tools and tenants went over this haunted cave. These are both types of dripstone, but dripstone doesn't have to form by dripping water. It can also form by flowing water, creating what we call flowstone right behind you guys there. Now, there is one last super important thing. This is the only thing in the entire cave that you are allowed to touch. Stalag pipes. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate the pity line.
All right, so there you have it. We did the Cave of the Winds, and we did the Cave... The um, Manitou Cliff Dwellers. That's the one. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We uh, will be going on a lot more adventures, and stay tuned. We'll see you guys soon. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>